Hi Tim. I'm just a little bit behind, so I'm going to be a few minutes. But I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want to go live late. Um, but I'm just going to be a couple of minutes. Okay, just bear with me, please. Hi guys, just give me a couple of minutes. I'm just a little bit running a little bit behind. I won't keep you too long. Hey everybody, um, I'm just running a little bit late, but I wanted to start the video on time. I've got to just pop out of the room for a minute and I'll be back, okay? <coughs> okay, we're on. We've got a fairly full house. We've got 17 people on already, which is good. Thank you very much, everyone. Just going to light up. I'm smoking the Winslow freehand. And we're smoking some 40th anniversary. My second bowl of that today. Okay, how has everybody been? Well, um, I'm not going to be on Saturday, so I thought I would do this tonight. And I thought I would coincide it with uh, a new sale. And um, hopefully the final one before the wedding. Not long to go now. Um, it's Monday a week. It's scary. 
And I still haven't done a speech. Hey, Stephen. Okay, let's see who we've got so far. We've got Kevin, we've got Lack, Steve, Parktree, Tim, Phil, Jay, evening, Jay, how are you doing? The Peaches, Anna and Martin, Josh, Pipe Grump, Edopi, Ron Bunny, oh, made us know. Okay, I think that's the one. Well, at least those who have uh, said hi. Um. <coughs> Okay, so a couple things I want to mention first. Firstly, I wanted to say a huge thank you, Josh, to the Grump, for creating a new intro for my videos. As you can see, my channel is, is in the process of a um, over. Hi, Blackwood. You can see the logo has changed, and I've changed them to London Calling with Simon. I originally did it as London Calling, but there's so much on YouTube with titles London Calling because of the song. And I think it would be difficult for people to find, as is even London Calling with Simon was also quite difficult when I tried to find myself when I went into another device and signed out. Um, anyway, the, um, the intro is ready, I'm going to show you that in a second. Just done an amazing job. And then we get on to uh, pipes that are uh, available for sale. And then we get back to chat. So, just going to get the uh, thing on screen. Hopefully, you'll see this on a few videos. Alright, that didn't quite work because the sound it uh, regurgitates basically. Anyway, we'll see it on the next video. Okay. What was that? Um, I also wanted to mention about the. Um, Giveaway. I haven't yet devised the uh, theme for the giveaway, um, but I imagine that I'll be doing a video on that uh, during the next week. I don't think I'll have the ability to do it more then. Hey Chad, yes, I'm afraid though the uh, mug emeritus is in the background. Yeah, somebody mentioned that would be good to have it in the background, so but why not? So hopefully whether if anybody's got any nice ideas or a giveaway team, you let me know. And in the meantime, I'll be devise a decent uh, prize package, and uh, we'll see how we go. I think we're at 1998 at the moment, um, so I think it's reasonable to uh, do the giveaway, even though we haven't quite um, reached the uh, juncture yet. Anyway, right, let's get to the uh, nub of the matter. Hi, John. So let's get some put out. All right. So some of these you've seen in previous video, and they haven't sold some of them. And um, I'm going to fight through all the pipes, and then talk to me about them afterwards. Uh, you may have seen them not for sale. Some of them you may not have seen at all. I don't know. Okay. So what I'm going to do is the same format as last time. I'm going to put that down so there doesn't be distractions. And um, I'm going to fire through all the pipes and then talk to me about them afterwards. So I want to try and get through them as quickly as possible. And once I've gone through them, if you want me to revisit any of them, with pleasure. Just tell me which ones you want to see close up and I'll put them back on. Okay, so here we go. The first one was in the sale last time. It's the Wally Frank. And there was quite a bit of interest in it last time, but it just, um, for whatever reason, the actual sales didn't go through. Nice clean pipe. 
some nice grain on it. It says uh, straight grain on there, and on the other side, Wally Frank. Nice pipe. Forty-five pounds that one. That's the Wally Frank. <coughs> Next one is the Ascorti Business, bent, um, I don't know what you'd call that, a billiard or a brandy. Um, a very nice pipe in superb condition. Ascorti Business, as you can see there. This is a 9mm pipe. This is in pristine condition. The bit is pristine. You, look, you can see my reflection in there. There you go, what a treat you have there. Okay, so that's a very nice rustication. Pretty typical of the uh, Italian style of uh, sort of sea rock style of rustication. Handmade in Italy. Um, <coughs> I've, re I've reduced quite a few of the prices. This one is £125. I think last time when it was, I can't remember, 135 145 I don't remember. But anyway, so that one's 125 um, this one you've also seen, this is the stern crest. Um, I've done a, bit, a little bit of restoration on this myself to just bring out the smooth parts. It's a beautiful rustication on this one. There are quite a few which you can get online, but the, I think the dimensions of this one, the balance of this one is just superb. Sterling silver band. It's got a new coating on, on and a bowl coat on the inside. And on the band, you can just about make out stern crest sterling, I think it says. But a, a lovely pipe, a really a nice bit of history from the US. And this one is £60. I will put the list um, um, on the uh, description once the video uploads. Next up is the Astley Sandblasted uh, Dublin. Um, I would say with a degree of confidence that this is made by Bill Taylor of Ashton's fame. Um, it will be from the 1980s. Nice smooth top. Some bird's eye on there. Lovely ring grain sandblast. Nice and craggy. And um, I've reduced this one as well. And this one is 180. Um, it's new unsmoked. Um, old stock obviously from the 1980s. A rare find. Um, and a lovely example of the Astley pipes. Where's the, I'm trying to find the Astley, there it is. There you go, Astley German Street, London. So this one is 180. Um, this one is the scoop. The Cumberland stem also unsmoked. Nastly. Very, very nice pipe. If you're a clencher, this is a delight. Beautiful full bent, pretty much. Some nice grain and nice mahogany colour, deep colour. Very, very nice dimensions. I like the way this sort of goes out and then back in. Lovely little pipe. And this one is down to 125. I think it was 135 before, can't remember. Um, the next one <coughs> is this uh, <coughs> Cumberland Pot, uh, also an Astley with a silver band by Leswood. This is a beautiful, beautiful pipe, very classical shape. Really was something that I would have liked to have smoked myself, but I'm just a little bit too scared to convert this to 9mm. Good tight fit. It could possibly done, be done, but I'm just too nervous to do it. And the last thing I'd want to do is ruin a bit of English uh, pipe history. If I had to make a guess, I would say this is this one was made by Dunhill. Uh, most of the pipes for Astley's was made by Ashton's, Dunhill, and Sheraton. Um, there were some other makes, but those were the main the main ones. 
Um, the next one is the very big gold banded bull bulldog, which you've seen as well. Um, this is a gold band, good size, chunky size bulldog with lovely sort of deep Rhodesian um, lines going around the bowl. Nice green, really nice green patterns there. You can see the grain running through the briar and then coming towards bird's eye as this tapers in. And you've got the bird's eye structure on the top there. Also unsmoked, old stock obviously from the 80s but unsmoked. I wasn't quite sure who would have made this one. I didn't really... Um, I don't know. I'm not, I, I'm not convinced about this one. Whether it was Dunhill or Sheraton or Ashton, not sure. If I had to take a, a guess, an uneducated guess, I would go with Dunhill um, because of the way the uh, stem is cut, but that's just me. Uh, this one is uh, 350. Um, it was 395, but I pulled it down to 350. Um, I know it's a lot of money, but for this particular pipe, I still think it's a steal. Uh, retail, if this was going retail, this in my book, this would be over a thousand pounds. So it's a high end pipe. It's a, it's a special pipe. Um, next one is the Millville. This is the Millville fishing pipe. You can see the fishing uh, carving there. This is a, a pipe which I had restored by Ian Walker of uh, Northern Briars and he confirmed it's original. I had originally had some concerns about the M because you do see Millville pipes with a, a curved M, a more script kind of font. But he said that this is absolutely spot on. This is an original Millville pipe with the original stem. This is a Leswood band and you can see the little ring there which had a chain attached which had a little wind cap on there. Um, but a normal basic metal wind cap on there, a wind guard um, designed for outdoor use for fishing and that kind of thing. And due to the rarity of this one being a Millville and the fact that it's a fishing one, I've uh, priced this one at £100. It was more before. Again, it's a reduced uh, price on that one. Um, next up, I'm trying to do this as quickly as possible, is um, the Dunhill Cherry Wood. Again, really nice ring grain in mint condition. Very clean on the top of the bowl. I should really put some light on. Um, very, very nice condition. This darkening is, is the briar, it's not uh, char. Um, very, 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 very clean condition. It's from 2012. Really nice ring grain there. Really good example of Dunhill's cherry wood. This one is 250. I think it was 275 last time. So all the prices have been reduced. This one here, this one I think is is a steel. I've reduced this one to 130. This is a Boswell freehand Dublin. Um, very nice uh, rustication on this one. Beautiful straight grain on the stem, on the shank rather. It's a lovely pipe. Some nice bird's eye on there. Nice bent stem on there, tortoise shell stem. It's in pristine condition. Uh, as I've mentioned before, I've used this only for Stonehaven on very rare occasions. That's all it's ever had in here. This one I've brought down to 130 and I think so far this is the steel of the bunch so far. Next is a pipe which you might be surprised that I'm putting in the uh, sale. I didn't expect to do it myself, but um, I really went through my pipes with a fine tooth comb. Um, so this is quite unique. This is a um, Pipe Club of London pipe from 2016, made by Peterson. It's got a acrylic Cumberland stem the silver P. It's on the uh, ferrule, it's got 2016 silver, sterling silver. You've got the Peterson stamp and the hallmark. 
and then you've got laser etched, laser engraved, the Pipe Club of London logo on the side there. Really nice grain structures here. Interesting grain, it's a sitter obviously. And that's new unsmoked. Um, you just, you can't buy this on the market. And there was a limited amount made um, that year in 2016 for those who ordered it. And that's it, they're not available anymore. Um, and this one is £150. It's a collector's item and I think great price. Another pipe which I did not expect to put in. Um, an absolute stunner. Some of you will have seen it. This is a Paul's pipe. Paul Menard. This is a real high-end pipe. It's a cutty. Unsmoked. New unsmoked. It's got phenomenal, phenomenal grain on it. It's got the bird's eye there, just unbelievable. We need some focus people, there we go. We've got some bird's eye which runs all the way up the back of the bowl. And you've got some lovely, lovely grain there. All the way around. And then you've got Paul's, just his pièce de résistance, his, his bit work, the stem work, so symmetrical. Just look at the lines on that. Beautiful, beautiful stem on it. Uh, stem, yeah. The transition from stem to shank is just phenomenal on his pipes. There's, he just, it's completely seamless. And the reason why I'm putting this in the sale is because I can't convert it. It's got a Teflon um, mortise and tenon. Um, so there's really not much I can do with it in terms of converting it. So with a lot of regrets, with huge regrets, I'm putting it in the sale. Um, and this one is priced at 275. Uh, it's, it's, it's a real, this is a, a real high-end pipe. There's no question about it. It's got stunning grain, good contrast staining, beautiful bird's eye, and just, it's, it's just made superbly. It's got uh, Paul pipe, Paul's original leather bags, which he makes himself. So, what did I say that was? 275. Next up is a cheap pipe, which you've seen before. It's a Briarbird uh, pot, ruby kind of stain with a tortoise shell stem, in very, very nice condition. Really good uh, smoking pipe, and that's 65 pounds. 65 pounds, a great pipe, a Briarbird Albatross series. 65 pounds. Next one is Cuban Cigar Club. So there's a bit of water on the box. Just ignore that. This is a Cuban Cigar Club billiard, 50 pounds. Very, very nice green on it. Beautiful little pipe. It's not so little actually. Very nice grain on this one, nice sandblast, unsmoked, new unsmoked, classic shape, CCC being the Cuban Cigar Club, there you go, Cuban Cigar Club, and that's £50. Uh, next, this is an Edwards um, Grecian Briar. Algerian briar rather, so they're very very light. A beautiful rustication, lovely looking pipe. I bought this pipe from Joe Case and it's in pretty much mint condition. You can see the Algerian briar. Um, I had a new stem put on by Ian Walker, so this has got a lovely Cumberland stem, a red Cumberland stem. So the pipe is in absolutely fantastic condition and I can attest to the fact that it's a great smoker. It really smokes like a train. The draft on it is fantastic. Um, this was in my box of pipes which were allotted for conversion. And if it doesn't sell, I'll probably still do that at some point. It's got enough meat on the shank to do that. Um, this one is 80 pounds. And this is a great smoker, I can tell you that. It's a nice looking pipe, beautiful rustication on it. 80 pounds. Next up is 
end pipe, which you have seen, as soon as I can lay my hands on it. I thought I'd put all my pipes out of here. Here we are. Here we have the Scott Hudson. This is the tampon pipe set. This is a pipe that I had custom made for me, must be nearly two years ago. Unsmoked. Beautiful Scott Hudson pipe. This is all, all these extra accoutrements here were custom ordered. Lovely, lovely sort of, it's not exactly a saddle bit stem, but it's kind of. Um, little, little gentle bend on it. Um, some uh, ebony in there and some boxwood and some other exotic woods, brass ring. This is a typical rustication from Scott Hudson. Smooth top, smooth bum, and a matching tamper. Same makeup, ebony, and a lovely bit of a curve there to give you a really nice uh, shaped cherry on your char. Cherry on your char. The Scott Hudson is 185 pounds. Um, that's less than what I paid for it. It's an, this, uh, uh, if you're into the market of this kind of thing, it's the same kind of size as a, in terms of size, as a um, one of the Jake Hackett style um, pipes, uh, the pokers and that kind of thing. Um, but it's much more um, refined. Not that his pipes are not refined, but it's it's more slight. It's got a, a narrower sort of circumference. It's lighter, but it's got a good depth of of bowl. It's baby bottom smooth in the in the inside of the bowl. Um, a fantastic pipe. <coughs> Excuse me. So that one is one eight five. As I said, it's less than what I paid for it. Next oop. Next oop is what have I done with it? Bear with, bear with. There it is. Next up is a rat raise. I bought this recently, but I'm just really not smoking it that much. It is a rat raise mushroom lined pipe. It's hardly had any use. And <coughs> it's a kit, it takes two pipes. It comes with uh, some filters, it comes with a check tool, some pipe cleaners, and some business cards, and if you want to go into business with batteries or something. Um, so that one, this is a 9mm pipe as well, so you've got the best of both worlds. Very nice uh, stain, contrasty stain, like a grey and black, sort of beigey kind of uh, stain there. Very, very nice. It's a 9mm. Very clean. And this one is just £65 for the whole kit. Kit and caboodle, as they say. Very nice case, hard uh, case. Protect your uh, pipe and that. Sixty-five pounds. <coughs> <coughs> Next up is a pipe I have shown before. Is the Refbrook freehand. Now this really, really is a collectible pipe because he's stopped making pipes now. In the Danish pipe shop, all you're seeing is the real basic uh, pipes which he had left in the workshop. Some of them are seconds. You know, basic billiards, um, that kind of thing. Something similar to what I sent to uh, Josh. Good smoking pipes, but they're run-of-the-mill pipes. Um, this one is a freehand which I bought in Zurich when I was there. Um, it's just a, an absolutely beautiful artisan pipe. Nice plateau on the top. Got a um, I'm assuming that's acrylic Cumberland and a white insert. Unbelievable flame grain on this pipe all the way around. And it's got a beautiful kind of faceted curve on the bowl. It's just an absolute stunner. This is a real, a real sort of uh, talking piece. So that's that, um, and this one is 290, and that's what I paid for it. 
So um, all I'm trying to do is get my money back on this one. It's 294 the Rechberg. I'm nearly done, guys, before you get the psychiatrists in. Um, just two more pipes. Um, the next one is a JJ Fox, also a pipe which I have put down for conversion, but if I can sell it, I'll sell it. Very nice Hungarian-style uh, Umpol kind of pipe. It's got some nice green on it. Very, very nice. That's a nice bird's eye there. Very nice. I'm, this is a, a, I think it's a, is it a Parker? Or a JJ Fox pipe. It's a JJ Fox pipe. And this one is 60 pounds, new unsmoked. Very, very nice pipe. And last, but not least, again, this one is going to be a bit of a wretch, a rent wretch, a bit of a wrench for me. Um, this is one of my very first pipes. This is another Refberg. Can you guess which one it is yet? Yes, it's the Semi Levat. Um, it's had some use. A fair bit of use in the beginning. I, ha I haven't smoked it really for a long time now, but I did smoke it a fair bit when I first got it. Semi Levat. Very, it's light as a feather. This is a, I think it's less than 30 grams. Got a lovely jade insert there. But again, this is too narrow for me to convert. And because it's got that on there as well, it's going to make it uh, almost impossible to do. So that's the final one. And this one, again, being, you don't see any more of these with the fancy stuff on them. It's really just the basic pipes that you can get now. And this one is uh, 120 pounds. Well, I'll take an offer on that one, actually if somebody wants to make me an offer. Okay, guys, that's it. Those are the peeps. I'm going to get mine lit now, back onto the Winslow freehand, and some 40th anniversary. Okay, guys, let's have the psychological analysis, please. Thing indeed. So how have we all been, people? Cheers, Tim. And the earliest I've had is 2014. And I've still got some left. I was uh, fortunate enough to get uh, a few more McClelland uh, tins the other day. Um, I think I mentioned it before, there's a guy um, called uh, Crappy Pipes. And he, was, he had a store at the Chicago Pipe Show and he posted the picture before he went to the show with a huge stack of like half a dozen different McClelland blends. <clears throat> I contacted him before he went and I said, could I buy some? He said, yeah, sure. So I bought a few. And then when he was at the show, I sent him a message and I said, look, if you left with any afterwards, um, um, I'll take a few more. And he did have a few. And um, so I got a few more. So it should keep me in McClellan's for a little bit anyway. And I didn't get a huge amount. I got a few tins of 40th. I got a couple of tins of 40th, 17 and 16 Christmas cheers. In terms of Virginia's pipe head, I've said before on my channel that I don't rate 
McClellan Virginians together with other McClellan Virginians. I think they're in a, uh, a league of their own and it's a, just a, a different style. And it's not necessarily that they're better than anything else in the world. I just find them to be, <clears throat> and I'm very limited in my experience with this because I've only come to them in the last four or five months. But um, I do find that they've just got this richness, this tanginess, almost like a cinnamony kind of, um, not cinnamony, cloves, cinnamon and cloves, and they've just got like a, a Christmas pudding kind of spiciness, a sweet spiciness going on, and a fullness of, of flavour on the palate, which you just don't get in other tobaccos. So I kind of set them apart. So for me, when you talk about a classical pure Virginia, I don't think of McClellan's, I think of full Virginia Flake, I think of all it golden sliced, Capstan, you know, all the classical straight Virginias. That's what I consider as straight Virginias. The, these, I mean, there's, there's people who talk online ad nauseum as to whether they are really pure Virginias or if there are any sweeteners in there or anything like that. And the McNeils maintain that they're absolutely pure. And based on, the, on their um, ability to stand on principle and close down their shop, one, one would have to trust them and believe what they've said. And, and it's just the way they do it and the fact that their choice of leaf is, is the best, pretty much, as he himself claimed in a video, which I'm sure you've all seen on YouTube of him opening uh, an old tin of uh, cellar. And he just said that the leaf that he uses is the best in the world. Old Lang Syne, in regards to your retracted question, um, I agree with you. That's why I'm selling. People have often asked me and said to me and cautioned me about selling pipes and then regretting it afterwards. And um, I, I sometimes do get twinges of regret, but uh, that's changed in me. Um, and I don't get regret. I actually, when I sell it to somebody, a pipe to somebody who is is going to enjoy it, I, I'm, I'm actually quite thrilled because rather than I can still, you know, watch somebody enjoying the pipe and know that the pipe is being smoked, I've got a return on the pipe, whether I've made a profit or whether I've taken a loss, it doesn't matter, as long as I've got something back for it and I can then either use the money usefully or possibly get some other tobacchiana, um, I, I'm, I'm, I don't have a problem with that. But if a pipe for me is not being smoked, if it doesn't work for me or if um, it's not a 9 mil pipe and I'm only smoking 9 mils now, um, I agree with you. What's the point of having a pipe if you don't smoke it? I'm not a collector in the typical sense of the word. the pipe on top of the mug. This is this is a Tom Phillips freehand. Tom Phillips is an English gentleman and he carves beautiful pipes every so often. He's not a full-time carver. He's got some lovely grain. This, this is a real sort of sit in your armchair kind of pipe. This is one of his as well. It's a uh, bulldog. as is this one. It's a pop. Absolutely pipe head. The pipes are also quite big. Oh, sorry, I thought you were talking about me, darling. Um, incidentally, I've also, um, the Northern Briars have all, the ones that I was selling have all gone. I could be tempted on this one, perhaps. I've only just got it, but I'm, I don't know why, but I'm not really smoking it that much. This is a Calabash Northern Briars. It's a 9mm, got a huge bowl, but very light, very, very light. <coughs> the green Cumberland stem, silver band. Lovely little pipe. I should really smoke it more, to be honest.
yeah, I'm, I'm happy to keep it. I tend to go in, in um, sort of phases, like we all do. Uh, I mean, even, even this pipe, which I haven't had that long, but I wasn't smoking it. But uh, I've been smoking it today and really enjoying it. Did anybody read the article about the FDA's ruling? Or rather, not the FDA, but the... Um, yeah, my pipes, I look after them very much. <coughs> oh, sorry, somebody did ask me about Peterson's before. There was a question before if I don't get on. Yes, you had heard me say that, that's true. I'm not a... Um, let's put it this way, the Peterson's that I've had and smoked I haven't got on with, but some people are actually, you know, complete devotees of Peterson, so it's just a personal thing. Yeah, I've only got that Peterson. Um, I did have a... I have had a few. Um, I had a, a beautiful Bent XL90, I think it was. Um, I bought that in the Cuban Cigar Club the first time I visited the shop. And it had the most endearing grain pattern. It was an interesting colour, the grain as well. <coughs> um, and I just loved the pipe. It was a fishtail rather than a peelip. don't really like peelips. Um, it had a nice silver ferrule on it. Um, it was a stunner, an absolute stunner. It's probably somewhere way, way back on my channel. It was my it really my best looking pipe at the time, um, going back a couple of years. The problem with the pipe was that it gurgled every single time. Um, not just on wet tobacco or like 10 minutes or 15 or 20 minutes into the smoke. It was um, literally within 10 seconds it would gurgle. Absolutely, Josh, the physics of the pipe, there was something up with it. So I phoned up Peterson's in Ireland. I spoke to the branch manager there, and he said, send it in. And I'll have a look at it. So I sent it in, and um, they said they'll replace it. There's obviously some issue with it, and they'll replace it. And I don't know if he thought I was an idiot or what, um, but he sent me a picture of a pipe he was going to send me as a replacement and it was just you couldn't compare it it was a bog standard pipe with very very basic grain no, no real pattern of grain on it whereas mine was 360 degrees straight grain and it was just a, an awesome pipe in terms of visual aesthetics so I said no no thanks just send me my pipe back he said I'm sorry I can't we've already cut it in half I said what what do you mean you've cut it in half I didn't ask you to cut it in half, it's still my pipe. He said, no, well, as soon as you send it back, if there's something wrong with it, we have to take it apart to see what's wrong so that we can avoid it in the future. I was fuming. I was absolutely fuming. I was gutted at the time. I really was. And I had a go at them. I had a real go at them. And in the end, they, they sent me a nice pipe, I have to say. And I had my suspicions as to whether or not they actually did, or whether the guy who received it just kept it. But that's just me being cynical. But they sent me a, a very nice one, a really one with a, it was a, a bright coloured one with a very tight grain. And I actually, um, I sold it as new. Um, and uh, I never smoked it, I sold it and I made some money on it. So I've paid for the original one about £130. And for the replacement ones, I think I sold it for a couple of hundred pounds, so wasn't complaining. I also had a Peterson tankard, you know, the very small ones, with a, uh, but that I think was a, a P-lip. Um, and that's, I think, the Petersons that I've had.
Um, I, I didn't think that the Petersons had a, too small of a borehole. It was just the way they drilled the bent pipes, because it's a factory pipe, um, you know, sometimes you, when you buy a bent pipe online, in fact, I would say, that for the most part, the majority of bent pipes that you get are badly drilled. Um, the anatomy of a, of a bent pipe obviously presents big challenges for, from a drilling point of view. But some of them, that they, the, 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 the kind of condition that they're prepared to send them out in, in terms of the drill, it shocks me sometimes. <coughs> The older Petersons, generally speaking, are reputed to be a lot better. Cheers, Hawk. Thank you very much for joining. In case anybody wants to get in touch um, in relation to any of the pipes, um, I've, put, I've set up a new email address, so it should coincide with um, the new channel name. And the new email address is londoncallingytpc at gmail.com. <coughs> I tried to get London calling, but that was obviously taken already. So I just wanted to find something that was easy to remember for people on the YTPC, so that made sense. Um, somebody asked about a number one tobacco or a go-to tobacco, what was that question? I'm going to type it. Josh, Smoking Hawk, saying bye-bye to you. I mean, the Bosco Piper UK email address will still work. But um, it, it's just to make everything uh, seamless to tie in. So in terms of a go-to tobacco, well, I was smoking London Fog, probably the most regular, but since I, um, that was Smoking Hawk, he was saying bye-bye to you. Um, at the moment, I'm, I'm smoking McClelland Virginia's a lot. So whether it's the 40th anniversary or the uh, Christmas cheers, uh, Virginia Woods, I'm actually smoking them more than London Fog at the moment. I've also been enjoying um, First Responders by Cornell and Deal, also a nice vapour. Fog is the dogs, absolutely. It's a very nice smoke. I do enjoy it, but I've, I've just been on the McClellan's more at the moment. But one thing about the fog is that it's it's a tobacco which you can always turn to because it's got a bit of everything. Um, the Virginia Woods, I think, has got some kind of um, aromatics in it. That's my personal opinion. Officially, that it, it doesn't, but I think it does. There's a little bit of a vanillary kind of flavour there. Eric in the house. Yeah, so it's definitely McClellan's is uh, prove it, Eric, prove it. 
Can you see me? Oh, you have, that's true, Eric. <laughs> true, true, true. Yeah, John, it, it, the, the Virginians have got natural sweetness, but there's a vanilla-y kind of flavour to it, which there's something else going on. I mean, the McClellan Virginians generally, you know, they're just, as I said, they stand alone. Um, and they do have such complexity in flavour, which it kind of belies the logic that it's pure. Um, when you read the uh, descriptions, it kind of... I think I remember seeing on one of them that the description kind of hinted at the possibility. called London Fog. It's a home blend. It's not commercially available. It's just a mixture of uh, McClellan's Virginia Woods and all it golden sliced. Oh, it's this one. The description on this one is smooth, rich, mellow flavor with an incomparable woodsy aroma, blended from matured red Virginias, stoved Virginias, wide cut lemon Virginias, and other premium tobaccos. Okay, it doesn't say other flavors, but it says other premium tobaccos. Um, I don't know. To me, it's just. This is the the first one that I ever had. This was the um, this is what got me into Virginia's, into the McClellans. This is the uh, um, this is the first tin of McClellans that I really got into. Um, the 2014. This one here I got from Stutter from Cynthia and Susan about two years ago. It sat in my drawer for nearly two years. Um, I only just sort of tried it here and there, maybe once or twice over the two year period. And now that I'm into the McKellens, I'm trying to smoke it smear sparingly, but I'm enjoying it. So this one was a 2003, which I got in the Azrati sale. Um, and I figured that with that kind of age, I, would give it a, I was going to give it a try, even though I wasn't so hot on Virginians at the time. Um, I popped this tin. And um, it was, you know, really nice dark tobaccos. Um, I think this is a mixture now of the original tin and the fresh tin, um, just to make it go a little bit further. <coughs> <coughs> Even the aroma, you know that ketchup... Uh, uh, generally speaking, um, if the tin is sealed, I'll leave it in the tin, um, unless it's something like say, full Virginia Flake, um, which I think benefits from getting some air and then jarring. Um, I think it, it depends also how soon you want to smoke it. If you're talking about cellaring, definitely leave it in the tin. I had a chat with Robert Germain about this. I asked him because they're selling a lot of their stuff in, in pouches now. I asked him how long is it safe to leave in a pouch? He said he wouldn't leave it in a pouch more than three months. He said jar it up and do a thing. But if you're going to smoke something within, say, a year, I would jar it. 
Um, if you're cellaring something, leave it in the tin, most definitely. Um, if you've got a tin, it's pouch and take it out. Um, but if it's something that will smoke in the medium term, like, as I said, the full Virginia flick, my view is, and again, I'm, I'm no authority on the matter, um, I'm only a spring chicken in terms of uh, pipe smoking, um, but my view is that the air does help. In the same way as decanting wine helps, um, the air definitely enhances the flavour. I've certainly experienced that. Um, so with a tobacco, I think the same is true. Well, if you, if of course, you've got to check the tins, of course. Um, but if you have a look at Jeremy's video to Justin Taylor, I think that disproves that. He's got hundreds of tins, um, not dried up. He's got plenty dried up as well, but uh, he's got loads of tins which are not dried up. <coughs> Where's my pipe? Ah, oh, there it is. He's got an absolutely stonking cellar. I see a lot of people commenting on his videos, um, but I tell you what, he deserves it. He works hard to get those tins. You know, he's he's he, he makes connections with shops. You know, especially the esoteric stuff. It doesn't come easy. You've got to build up a relationship, and that's the only way to do it. And so, if he manages to do it, I say good luck to him. Hey, you beautiful, beautiful people. Anyway, Crosby's Corner in the house. I beat you to it, Quaker. Um, there was a time when uh, I was getting a, a fair few pipes from the Boswells. <coughs> and um, so I was kind of in their graces. So when they did get an esoterica drop, I was always, not always, I was every so often fortunate enough to get some, but nowadays um, it's very few and far between that I buy a pipe from them. <coughs> so <coughs> I'm not first on their list. I've asked them many times for some Penzance. I've got a tiny drop of Penzance left. Um, but so far I have not been uh, fortunate. But as I've said before, it's not something that I'm chasing up big time at the moment. If I get it, I get it. If not, not. Well, I just went with to um, my wife and I went to Hobbycraft the other day. We were looking for stuff to, um, you know, for setting out tables and for the part of the wedding celebrations. Not the wedding itself, but the following week when we were having guests over for dinner and stuff like that. So we went to. Uh, Hobby craft to get some nice uh, things to, to lay the table with. And uh, I spotted these. <coughs> I've not seen these in the UK before. I've seen them on Amazon uh, from America and you have to pay for the shipping, so I've never bought them. But it's these, um, the ball, I've got the standard size Nixon ones, but these small ones, which you can get a couple of ounces in. Um, I mean, there's lots of small preserving jars that you can get. Um, I do have these little ones here, which you can get a couple of ounces into. Um, I've got the standard size and I've got the larger size and I recently got these from Ikea also a very cute size very nice little size but I have wanted to get these for quite some time so um, and they're well priced they're five pounds something for four so you're talking about one there's about 120 130 for each jar it works out so I bought a couple of boxes of those <coughs> Now, in terms of jarring up and um, the McClellan's uh, tins, I've got a drawer, which I'll show you. So this is my drawer of, well, you've got a bunch of them in the Tupperware containers there as well, but this is some of the stuff that I'm smoking at the moment. Um, and as you can see, a lot of them are open. I'm just 
just smoked this for the first time, Dan's blend. I smoked that this afternoon. And this, um, the Acadia I opened recently, I did the first impressions. I've smoked a fair bit of this one. This is HH Mature Virginia from 2010. Lovely, lovely blend. You know, I would never have touched the McLaren. So in here, you've got a lot of open tins. Um, and the drawer is obviously not airtight. But um, I find generally that they're absolutely fine, especially the ones with these plastic lids. The moisture is, is, is still in there, and um, I just keep an eye on it. If I feel that it's starting to get a bit dry, I'll put it into a Tupperware container or I'll jar it up. Um, but I find that with it drying a little bit, slowly, very slowly, in that drawer, it kind of really it helps it mature, and it also makes it a lot more sort of ready for smoking. So you don't have to leave it out for so long, and it's just doing its thing slowly, rather than you leaving it out and it's kind of evaporating quickly and, um, you know, I don't know if it makes a difference or not, but I don't. I find it works just fine for me. Yes, quick. I agree with you on that. Well, the, the plastic containers, the Tupperwares, those are airtight anyway, so those aren't a problem. Um, but uh, if, if these were going to be left for any length of time, I would just jar it up. Well, I'll tell you what, in terms of dry tobacco, um, in here I've got some 40th anniversary. I had um, rubbed out some of the flakes earlier on today. I'd had a bowl, and I'd had almost a bowl's worth left still. Um, sitting on, on the tobacco tray and it ended up staying on the tray for a few hours and when I came back to it it was tinder dry you know if I would have rubbed it between my fingers it would have gone to nothing and I just loaded the bowl and it's smoking perfectly well it's smoking fantastic And somebody asked before whether or not I rub out um, flakes before I jar them. Um, the answer to that is I don't. Um, I prefer them to be in flake form. Um, I don't know if there's a difference or not in terms of flavour, but I just like it. I enjoy the ritual. I enjoy looking at the flake and seeing how it's maturing, seeing how the coloration is going, seeing if there's any sugar crystals forming on it. So for me, it's just just the way I do it. I'm not, you know, a, a smoker of 10 bowls a day where you know, like people who have roll-ups, they'll you know, they'll my son smokes roll-ups. He's got a little silver box, a cigarette box and uh, every so often he'll sit down and he'll prepare 20 little roll-ups um, and he'll keep it in the case and he'll smoke them. Um, I'm not like that. I don't smoke 10 bowls a day where I need to save time to the extent that I'll, you know, rub out a, a tin's worth so that I can, um, you know, smoke it quickly, get to it quickly kind of thing. Uh, but some people do. Some people are completely into the nicotine and completely into smoking it for the nicotine. Sue Dunhill, for instance, um, she's done some videos in the past um, where she shows she's got pipes all over the house, full, ready for the next, you know, whenever it is. She's got one in the kitchen, one in the bedroom, one in the dining room, one in the lounge, and she's got in her mind a, a calculation of which one she's going to have when, and she'll prepare that at the beginning of the day or the night before. A lot of people do that the night before. So it dries out in the bowl. I've seen that as well. What are you want about Eric? Or should I say, what are you on? London fog. People getting into hospital due to London fog is about 65 years old.
Here's Eric. <laughs> Lost you there, tree. What's a hopper fed pipe? Oh, is that. Uh, no, I don't know what that means. Do do uh, enlighten us, tree. Oh, I see. This is I'm missing out on something here. Tim knows. Stephen knows. Just muggins here, doesn't? Someone enlighten me. I got you, I got you. A hopper to me is the thing at the top of a gutter pipe, which I suppose is the same thing really, is what you're saying. I'll take it to you that you're a chain uh, pipe smoker. Speaking of tree, there's his tamper that he made me. This is a collector's item now because BPR UK is no more. It's gone the way of the mug. I have no opinion on falcon pipes. I've never smoked one. I suppose it's an itch to scratch at some point, but uh, and it's cheap enough to try. Oh right, the mug. Because um, it was before how it ended up. Uh, where is it? This fellow here, this diesel bottle of eau de toilette, was precariously sat over there. And for some reason, somehow, it ended up toppling down and the mug was just below. It somehow landed straight into it and cracked. And there's cracks, fissures all over it in the bottom of the pipe. And when I came back into the room, there was a puddle of coffee on the table. And that was the end of the pipe. It is a, not the pipe, the mug. Yeah, it could have been a poltergeist. I'll have to get Stephen in here. It's interesting how sometimes we can uh, um, convince ourselves about certain things being esoteric, excuse the pun. I remember one time I was lying in bed and I felt this really, really sudden drop in temperature in the room and a cold breeze. And no, the window wasn't open. And I was quite scared at the time. A short time later, when I was in the synagogue, I went to the rabbi and I said, I told him what happened. And I regretted it afterwards because I felt such a fool. Because, you know, you can get a breeze in the house. And um, he just said, maybe <laughs> maybe there was a breeze from somewhere. You know, he just, he just went straight to the knob of it and just said, gave me a simple solution. And he said, maybe there was a breeze came in from somewhere. Maybe somebody else opened the window and created a breeze from somewhere else in the house.
I, I think people are, they, notwithstanding uh, Stephen's expertise and experiences in the past, uh, which I'm sure some of the stories which uh, Stephen told me up in Newcastle were quite hair raising. Um, but um, sometimes there's a simple explanation. Yeah. Scratching in the night is something I've lived with all my life. <laughs> Not for the reasons which you're thinking. I remember when I lived in my parents' house in North London, in Hackney, um, there used to be scratchings all the time. And it used to, it used to really bother me. I used to be terrified of it as a little kid and um, they say that in most uh, metropolises, you know, you're never more than about a, a meter away from rats. And these mice or rats were in the walls, literally in that house. In the walls, in the ceilings, in the floors, they were everywhere. And I used to literally lie awake at night sweating. I'm talking about as a kid of 10 or 12. I used to be terrified of that. But having said that, I couldn't kill one. Um, I remember one time, um, we'd uh, I was sitting in the kitchen with my dad and my mum, and we heard a little scurrying, and we managed to find that uh, there was a mouse under the freezer. So my dad gave me this big clothes brush. <laughs> I, I don't remember how old I was. I, I may have been 12, 13, maybe something like that. And my dad says, right, I'm going to move the freezer this way. It's going to come up your way, whack it over the head. He moves the freezer and I froze. <laughs> the, the, the little tiny little mouse was a cute tiny little thing. It was not more than two inches. And um, I, I just froze. I couldn't do anything to it. It was a sweet little thing. So it scurried off and lived to tell the story. Lived to squeak. Another day. Yeah, unfortunately, rats are very common these days. In London, we're seeing foxes more than we've ever seen before. Sometimes when I come back from a wedding at uh, 3, 4 in the morning, sometimes if it's really late, um, I will account encounter sometimes you know, even up to half a dozen foxes on a 20 minute ride. What's a good sign, Quaker? That's not generally not considered a good sign. Um, the only reason why it's a, they're in the city is because they um, they come to get food, and it's because we uh, dispose of so much edible food that they come and get it, and they're becoming less and less scared of human beings. Um, most people are not happy about it. There's been stories about foxes uh, getting hold of little babies in gardens, which is not a good thing. Well, I've not had a single offer on a pipe, so thanks for that, guys. Hmm. 
Well, I'll tell you, I think these are a steal. I think I paid either 16 or 18 pounds for it. it. Took about a month to come, I think. Maybe three weeks. When you buy it on eBay, it tells you to expect it about eight weeks. I think I got it in three or four weeks from China or Hong Kong. Um, it's great. It's great. It's, it's probably one of the most reliable lighters that I've had. I don't know how long it lasts, but uh, so far it works straight out of the box. This is a knockoff DuPont, ST DuPont from eBay. Uh, the real thing would cost um, probably about five hundred dollars. And you can, in America, you'd probably have it uplisted for about twenty-five or thirty dollars. No, I haven't changed the flint. They send it with a few spare flints. Ooh, I haven't seen the hedgehog in a while. Used to have a hedgehog as a kid. Well, didn't have it. It was um, a friend of ours had brought it in. It was slated as roadkill, but somehow he managed to save it. It was crossing the road, and it was gonna get squashed. And um, he picked it up. And um, yeah, it, it stayed with us for a while. We fed it. I don't know what happened to it in the end. Coyotes. I think there's plenty, plenty areas in the U.S. that get bears in Canada. So are the Indians. <laughs> okay, no politics. Shh. We haven't spoken about Trump yet, have we? Camping has a slightly different meaning here sometimes. Have you fired it yet, Eric? You get a huge cloud of smoke and a big uh, flash as you when you fire it from the uh, hammer area. Mm. 
So you're literally doing the whole gun gunpowder stick, are you? Yes, yeah, Stephen, please do look after your offspring. Thank you very much. Oh, and she still married you, Eric. Huh. Yeah, a very tolerant lady. Well, Joe, think uh, Julian Clary. A little bit before your times, but search him online. Or Alan Carr. Yeah, it's a bit ironic coming from you, Joe. Who's Giz? Is that your dog? All right, Giz. Oh, Gizmo, right. Gizmo, grab Dad's beard. Actually, an army dog. Hi Gizmo, how are you doing? She's smoking tonight. Yep, 
You used to do quite a few joint uh, videos before, uh, a while back, didn't you, Tree? I think it was when I first uh, saw your channel. It was usually with your wife. I'm not a big expert on Cavendish, but I think for the most part it's used for uh, blending. And for uh, hosting aromatics. He's what an air freshener. It's a cigar lighter. Well, it's, it's a jet lighter. It's a flamethrower, really. There she is. I haven't been smoking it that much the last uh, week or so. I've only been smoking London Fog in it. That's why I've ever smoked in it. And I've been smoking the McClellan's more, so. I picked up a, another sort of si similar sized Nero, but I haven't smoked it yet. <sighs> She's not for sale yet, Quaker. week <laughs> oh dear all oh, right well they have these they do have them on every so often they've definitely got some sandblasted ones on at the moment and they had a smooth one on not long ago um, it was on for a while before it sold I think I posted it on uh, IG to give people a heads up because quite a lot of people have really um, liked the look of that pipe. Oh, well, show us. Oh, you can't, can you? <laughs> You'll have to show us in your next video, Joe. Hey, Marty, Marty Messina. This is the pipe I'm smoking at the moment. It is a Winslow freehand. Very interesting shapes. It's like all over the place. It's got facets. It's got rustication. It's got smooth bits. It's got plateau. 
This is a perfect pipe for a magpie. It's got a bit of everything. I'm not so much a magpie as a meat pie. <laughs> I think this bowl is done. Cheers, John. Have a good one. It's a lovely tamper which came with the um, Amarelli Israeli pipe. Lovely little thing, made out of briar. Incidentally, I've got to send that pipe back. Um, I was gonna, th I, w I was thinking of doing a video about that, but I haven't yet. the Amarelli, but I noticed that there's a crack on the shank. I don't know if you can catch it in the light there, or the lack of it, but you can see that crack there, and that's definitely to do with the, because this is a 9mm nine, nine version, there's something gone awry with the drill, and, uh, and the crack does go right through the shank. I've got to say, they were very good about it. I sent an email to Italy, to Amarelli, and they responded pretty much straight away. Um, I think the next morning. And uh, I sent them a picture of it. And they said, no problem, send it back. And we'll send you another one straight away. So that's pretty cool. Well, I'll get another one. I'm not... Hopefully it'll be identical. It's a nice part. Got good shape. It's not too heavy. Definitely a clencher if you want it to be. Um, I would make it a fraction shorter in the stem, personally. But uh, that's just my personal preference. But it's absolutely fine. And this gold bar, they, they, this is the identifying uh, sort of sort of the white spot of Amarelli. Hey Pipe Dreams, how are you doing? How's your mirror? Um, but in actual fact, if you have a look at it, they say it's a gold bar, but it's not really. It's supposed to be 22 karat gold bar. But in reality, that is actually plastic. It's like an acrylic of some kind, which they've filled it with. And there's a bit of gold paint or gold leaf under it. But still, it's a nice little um, identifier for them. It's just, it's nice, it's catchy. I like it. I like the white um, line of the Castellos as well. I think it's, it's classy. It's, it's a, a good implementation of an identifying mark. I think the Castello line is nicer than the white spot of Dunno. It just seems to work. Enjoy your hockey, Josh, and thanks again for that uh, clip. Really, really appreciate it.
Well, I think that's probably a good juncture to uh, call it a night tonight. Unless there's something anybody else wants to talk about. I will say thank you to everybody. I'll say thank you to Tree, Chris, thank you very much, Pipe Dreams, Tim, Pipe Grump, Joe, Quaker Piper, John, Marty, Old Lang Zion, TH, and everybody else, whoever else was on here before, whoever was left on here now. Don't worry about it, uh, uh, Josh, seriously, it's fine. Don't drive yourself mad. Yes, like the oatmeal Quaker. I had um, uh, James. What was he called? Um, Pottsville Piper. He's really very quiet these days on, on YouTube. Um, virtually non-existent. He does do the occasional post on uh, IG. But um, he got me some... Uh, Seattle Pipe Club Plum Pudding Special Reserve and he sent it to me in a Quaker Oats tube and um, when it arrived he had not cleaned it out <laughs> so it still had a whole bunch of um, flakes in there of oats and when I opened up the uh, the box there was oats all over the place anyway guys and girls I wish you a very good night. Thanks for joining me. And a good time had by all. Nice chit chat. As I say, I won't be on on Saturday. Um, but um, I hope to be on during the course of next week uh, with a giveaway. And uh, try and think of something suitable as a theme. And put together some prizes, I guess. So thanks very much, everybody. And I will catch you on the next one. Cheers, Stephen.